Hi, this is Thomas Hammer, and I create nerdy synth videos using the artist name Waveformer. What you heard in the intro just now is panning automation on the Novation circuit using a small web application I have created called Circuit Bender. The web application is available on my website, uh, waveformer.net, and the web application listens to the macro controls for Synth 1 and 2 on the Novation circuit and sends MIDI commands for synth and drum panning back to the circuit. Since macro controls can be recorded and played back by the circuit, it's possible to achieve pan automation on the circuit by running the Circuit Bender web application. Let me show you how it works. The Novation circuit is connected to my laptop using USB. And on the laptop, I have opened the Circuit Bender web application. This web application will only work uh, in the Chrome and the Opera web browsers since they support web MIDI. The Circuit Bender application lists the available MIDI devices and lets you select the MIDI channels for your circuit device. Multiple circuit devices is supported. In the mapping widget, you can enable the mapping of macro controls to pan commands for the two synths and the four drum channels. You can specify which macro control should map to which panning target, and you can clear the macro mappings in the synth patch on the circuit, so that the macro control only controls the panning and not anything else in the patch. That means that if the synth pa patch on the circuit had that specific macro mapped to, for instance, filter cutoff, that macro mapping will no longer work in the patch, but will be used for panning instead. Also note that this does not change the synth patch in patch storage on the circuit. It only changes the current session on the circuit. So here we can see that synth 1 macro 7 uh, is mapped to synth 1 pan. Synth 2 macro 7 is mapped to synth 2 pan. Synth 1 macro 5 is mapped to drum 1 pad, and so on. The drum panning is controlled by the synth macro controls. Since the drum macro controls are hard coded on the circuit to drum pitch, decay, distortion, and filter, and that cannot be changed. If you want to change which macro controls are mapped to panning, hit the learn button and tweak the macro knob you want to use. I'm clicking learn for synth 1 pan and I'm tweaking macro control number 3. So you can see that um, the synth 1 macro control 3 is now mapped to synth 1 pan. Let me change that back to macro control 7. Um, yes, uh, it's possible to enable individual mappings by checking the individual checkboxes. So I can enable just uh, panning of synth 1 and 2 if I want to. Or I can enable all mappings by clicking the checkbox on the top. So I enable all the mappings and then I click the clear all macros button so that the macro controls in the synth patches used in this session are disabled and do not interfere with the panning. So let's see. I can hit play and uh, what you're hearing is a simple uh, drum pattern on drum track 3. And as you can see in the web application, uh, drum 3 pan is controlled by synth 2 macro 5. So synth 2 macro 5 controls the pan. Panning to the right, center, and to the left. If I now enable 
the Synth 2 track. I have already recorded some panning automation of uh, Macro 5. So let's see what happens. Here we see that the automation of Macro Control 5 from the Synth 2 track controls the panning of the hi-hat on drum track 3. You can see the automation going on here and you can hear the panning of drum track 3 going back and forth. Let me enable drum track 4 also. And if I change the drum 3 and 4 pattern like this, um, the automation stays the same even though the pattern is different. Let me bring in the bass and the snare. The panning of the snare on the drum 2 track is controlled by macro 6 on the synth 1 track. So to get the automation I have to enable the synth 1 track. left, right, center. I'm keeping the volume of synth 1 and synth 2 uh, at zero, so we don't hear synth 1 and 2 yet. Uh, let's turn on some effects. And bring in synth 2. A couple of notes on synth 2 is panned right and left. And most of the notes are panned in the center. And we bring in synth 1. Synth 1 is slowly moving back and forth from hard right to hard left. And if we visit the pan page, you can see the automation and the pan changing by the intensity of the lights on each pan control. Let me go back to effects and turn them on and turn off uh, everything but synth 1. Uh, of course I can control uh, the panning of synth 1 manually as well. So hard left, center, and hard right. Note that Macro Control 7 is not modifying the synth patch at all. It's only modifying the pan position of synth 1 through the Circuit Bender web application. Let's turn everything back up again. So that's the full mix with effects and panning automation for synth 1 and 2 and drum 2, 3 and 4. Um, as a bonus feature, I have added a mapping of resonance for the global filter as well. By default, this is mapped to synth 1 macro 8. So if I go here, I can turn the resonance up to maximum and tweak the global filter. And turning resonance down. So this is with no resonance. And maximum resonance. 
and the same for the high pass filter. So this is full resonance and no resonance. Finally, I want to mention some limitations uh, in using this method. So first, uh, when we're clearing the macros by pressing this button, the macro destination in that synth patch will be set to none. So the effect is the same as if the macro position was zero. So before you assign a macro and clear the macro in the web app, move the macro knob to zero and verify that the synth sound is okay. Also, it is the macro control on the synth track that is controlling drum pan. So if you mute the synth track, the panning automation will stop. Let me demonstrate this. So Let's listen to just the hi-hat and you can hear that uh, there is panning of the hi-hat. Uh, but if I go to the mixer and then mute synth 2, the panning stops. So enabling synth 2, we have pan automation. Muting synth 2 the panning is static. So that means uh, if you want to uh, mute the Synth 2 track instead of muting it here in the mixer, you should just turn the volume down. So turning the volume down uh, will have uh, no audible sound from the Synth 2 track, but the automation will still work. Also, um, panning is not instantaneous. So when the circuit receives a MIDI command to change the pan position, it starts to gradually modify the pan position. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't jump directly to that pan position. And this modification takes a little time. Um, I haven't measured it, but I'm guessing a tenth of a second or so. And that means that this method works best if the pan automation is recorded in real time while the sequencer on the circuit is running. Step recording the pan position for each note doesn't work very, very well. So, all in all, this is a hack to get pan automation on the circuit. It has some limitations, but it works well for me at least. And uh, with some luck, Novation might decide to include pan automation in a future firmware, firmware update. Um, until then, have fun with the Circuit Bender web application. And goodbye for now. <laughs>